Welcome to the 8th section of building databases with Redis called Scripting Redis. And this is the last section of this video course in which we are going to discuss how to extend Redis with additional functionality. We are going to devote the first two videos of the section to introduction to the main features of the Lua programming language which will allow you to write your own scripts in order to solve quite complex problems that are not optimal if solved by a sequence of Redis commands. In the previous sections we were talking about transactions and pipelined command execution as a way to optimize communication between Redis clients and servers in order to get more efficient problem-solving systems. Another method for optimization is to use server-side scripts written in the Lua programming language, which are able to execute more complex business logic that can be done by a sequence of built-in Redis commands. The Lua programming language allows us to write extensions which the Redis server is able to execute. Such extensions are implemented as scripts written in the Lua programming language which Redis can execute on the server giving you access to the data stored in its database. First of all, we have to get the Lua interpreter binary from the Lua.org website. On the website, click the download link and find the binary section on the download page where you can find Lua interpreter binaries. If you're on Linux, you might already have the interpreter installed and you can check whether it's there with the which Lua command on the command line. If the command prints nothing, then you don't have an interpreter installed. However, if it's installed, the command will print you a path to interpreter and it's ready to be used. Now, as the Lua interpreter is ready to use, let's create our first script and run it. To do that, we can use our favorite text editor, here in videos, we will continue to use Sublime Text 3. Let's start with the traditional Hello World script as it is shown on screen. Here we use a built in print function that is called and one string parameter is passed to it. In order to run the script, we go to the command line, involve the Lua interpreter binary, and pass a path to our script. As we now can see, our script works just fine, printing the string as expected. Let's continue and make a decent but at the same time concise overview of language features that will allow us to create Lua scripts from the very beginning. First of all, Lua stores data in variables and you can declare and initialize a new variable by specifying its name and using an assignment operator. As you can see here, we can use the print function not only for strings but also for other types. In this case, the numbers and nil type. Such variables declared on the highest level of a module are called global variables of the script. Lua supports the next data types. Nil, which basically means no value. Boolean, that can hold results of logical operations, which are either true false or nil as equivalent to false. Numbers, strings to store textual data, tables and functions. Also, Lua is a dynamically typed language, so you can reassign a new value to an old variable even if they have different types. As you might have noticed, the most complex data type here is a table. A table in Lua is almost absolutely equivalent to hash type in Redis when you have a unique set of keys mapped to a set of values. Rows from 10 to 12 in the source code show us how to initialize and fill a table while row 17 shows how can we retrieve a value from tables by keys either using square brackets or using the dot operator if a key is a valid identifier that can be used to name Lua variables. Now let's talk a bit about operation on other data types. First let's discuss booleans. Booleans are result of comparison lines 5 and 6 and logical lines 7 to 8 operations. 
They're also used to make decisions in conditional code execution, which we'll talk about in the next video. The next data type is numbers. Numbers are floating point numbers that act like numbers in mathematics. You can use them to do calculations, like shown on the screen. You can also use round braces in order to change the precedence of operations. By default, they are the same as in mathematics, multiplication and division go first, then addition and subtraction. Now let's move to the strings. Strings represent textual data, like assigned in first two lines. Lua allows the concatenation operation, gluing two strings, with the dot dot operator. We can use double square brackets instead of double quotes in order to say that it is a string without escaped characters. Also, such strings can be written in a multi-line manner with line breaks added into string as shown in terminal output on the screen, while escape characters are shown as is without interpreting. Apart from concatenation, there is a built-in string library that contains functions that operate on strings, and the most popular are find, which returns position of the second string argument in the first one, or nil if the second argument is not a substring of the first one, and format that performs placeholder substitution as shown in line 13. That's all on basic data types that the Lua programming language supports. Now you will be able to perform calculations and simple text processing using the Lua programming language. Now, we are moving to the next video in which we will discuss Lua Instructions Flow Control Statement.